Hey everybody. Everybody out there, outer space. We are outside today. In my Wonder Woman cup. This is millennial, millennial Wonder Woman. This is 1940s Wonder Woman. Lots have changed. Lots of things have changed. I know it's going to be hard to see, but anywho, same brew from last week. Starbucks blonde mixed with a medium roast from good old Mr. Coffee Pot. So this is usually what I do on Saturdays. I go over to my Masters Athletes Garage Gym um, and we just work out for like two hours. Anywho, a little snippet on today's session. Oh my gosh, my shoulders felt amazing. Um, lots of overhead work today. Uh, didn't get to the last portion of what my athlete is working on right now. However, um, lots of weight lifting. So my rotator cuff, um, when I talked about last week, felt really good. So um, in the comments below, drop down, uh, comment on uh, what type of coffee you're drinking this morning, how you made your coffee, and if you think I should look into possibly trying out that coffee. Um, I want to get into that a little bit more. Um, and explore coffee options, but uh, I am looking into getting an Aero Press. So if you think I should get one, um, convince me. So, anywho, um, overall this week, uh, shoulders have been pretty good. I was getting some elbow pain actually yesterday. Um, I have a pretty gnarly trigger point. Um, I'm not just doing that, but if I go, there it is see my middle finger just going. So a um, little bit of a trigger point that I have that I'll probably tend to later on with a dry needle um, because my just pressing on it won't get to where I need to get, get to. But today's session, um, I want to go over some two exercises that uh, were initially prescribed for me during my training in leading up to Miami. This was day one of my training through the um, Functional Bodybuilding, uh, which is a program from Revival Strength. Now, I'm not promoting them whatsoever, but I just wanted to do a program, and I felt like that was a good fit for me. Um, so, first movement, you can see in the background that I have, um, I have what we call a landmine. Um, so you can buy that little black contraption right there. It kind of just fits into a uh, plate and um, that little contraption you can get on Amazon. So it's called a land mine. Um, it's, it's just an awesome piece of equipment. You could travel with it um, as well as they, they make some other fancy land mines out there that kind of connect to a rig and, and whatnot. And for this particular exercise, uh, I have access to it. So I'm just going to demo with it today. Now you don't have to utilize um, a barbell within that, that landmine. You can just put the barbell uh, one end on the floor or in a corner so that it kind of like doesn't move around and then the other end you're going to be moving. So um, we're going to go over the what we call, I know that's backwards, um, the seated landmine shoulder uh, press. And I have three no or four numbers here. This is a three one three one tempo. What this first number means is always the against gravity type motion or the eccentric motion. Can Amy control her, her shoulder press descension in a nice control manner and in turn focus her energy onto the shoulder blade? The next number, so I'll be going down in a three second tempo. The next number is the pause at the bottom of the lift. So this is gonna be the front rack position of the landmine, the seated landmine. I'm gonna pause for a second, and then I'm going to push up or contract up for three seconds. One, two, three, full range of motion. And if you may have guessed that last uh, number one is I'm gonna pause one second at the top. So the goal is to get full range of motion, and then I'll kind of talk about um, why the landmine, especially with someone who have had or may have um, experiencing some end range pain in this flexion. Um, so I'm going to demo this uh, from my box that I'm on and then I'll kind of explain uh, the tempo and what I'm thinking about that process 
when I'm performing the landmine press. Okay, so you can kind of see the tempo work on that. So the why did I choose these numbers? Um, based on the training that I went through, these numbers in particular, the slower the movement, the lighter the weight should be on the bar, right? Or wh whatever movement you're, you're prescribing or doing. So this is going to hone in on more of a, what we call in the PT world, a kinesthetic awareness. So where is your joints and shoulders and arms, wrists in space? Does Amy know where her shoulder is positioned on each portion of the movement? So as I'm going through that movement, I'm trying to initiate at my lats, the muscle that kind of comes underneath here, to pull my shoulder blade down and keeping everything in a nice line. And then I'm pausing here to get this isometric contraction into my shoulder complex and then concentrically pressing up and trying to push or rotate my shoulder blade up in a nice, slow and controlled manner. And then adding that little pause at the end. Because sometimes when people press, we only press out here where the angle of the elbow is still bent. We wanna press out here and up. So, the point of the landmine, you could be sitting on a box, that's gonna be harder. The closer the, the client or the athlete is to the ground is gonna be harder because you're not getting momentum into the core or into the hips or into uh, the knees that's transferring up into your arms. So, start low. See if someone can control that movement. Progress up to standing. Now, that landmine, when I press up, I'm pressing at this angle of my shoulder, okay? Think uh, when you do a pull-up or in the gymnastics world or in the CrossFit world, we're always in this, what we call this extreme hyperflexion or hyper, sometimes people term it extension, but this is actually hyper extent or hyperflexion or this impingement range of motion. So what the landmine does, takes that last uh, 30 to 50 degrees out of the photo, right? Because that end range pain usually causes irritation into the uh, top cap of the shoulder or the top portion of the rotator cuff. So as I'm pressing that landmine, I'm gonna stop short of a straight line. I'm gonna be more out in front. I can still get strong in that position. So sometimes I remember starting out with this movement. Um, my shoulders were aggravated, right? But performing this movement helped me get rid of that last portion of that end range and not cause irritation. So you wanna be able to do the same movement, but you just might have to shorten the range of motion. So the eccentric, the coming down to three pause, I'm looking for that shoulder blade to not be loosey-goosey. So can I keep it against my uh, thoracic cage or my ribs, right? Am I in a strong front rack position? I always tell patients or athletes, be a tree trunk. Don't let me go next to you and push you over, right? 
keeping that one second pause and then contracting or pressing back up into a full range of motion. So trying to get that elbow straight and not bent. And I can add if I wanted to, if I wanted to get that, that last 30 to 50 degrees of full flexion, I can add a little bit of a lean in and pulling back on that bar. Um, great, great movement. Um, I've become a bigger fan of utilizing the landmine for different things. Uh, more of that to come down the road. Um, now you can work at different tempos. Tempos, especially three, four seconds, five second ranges where you're controlling five second down, you're pausing, maybe three seconds up, and then you're pausing at the top for five seconds. That is to create a stability component into the shoulder blade complex. So you can manipulate that tempo however you want. But think of this like I talked about last week. You have cracks in your foundations. A lot of us as human beings, in, uh, we, we want quick fixes. So we have to learn that quick fixes won't alleviate shoulder pain, period. It won't. That's why people go to physical therapy and then most of the time people just give up. Um, you have to be willing to put in the work in order to avoid imaging, avoid cortisone shots, avoid potential surgery. Now there is a point in time where surgery may be more applicable um, than uh, going through a year or so of rehab. Everybody's rehab is different. It's not always a year of rehab. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of a tidbit on um, a, a seated landmine press. Um, another, another range of motion that just kind of targets the uh, rotator cuff is a um, external rotation type movement. I'm just gonna demo one in sitting and um, you, can, you can manipulate your body any way you want. You can lay on your belly, you can uh, lay um, flat on the floor or your arm hanging off a table. But in today, um, I'm just gonna demo this particular movement. And our main focus is to um, focus on more of that eccentric lowering um, of the uh, little weight that I have. So um, I believe the tempo that I wrote last night was a three, zero, I think X zero, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd have to look at that again. Um, so seated, shoulder, external rotation. I'm just going to um, abbreviate ER. That's usually um, what we call that. So again, I know this is backwards on the screen. I can't write backwards on here. If I could, I, that's amazing. But if you can do that, kudos to you. So three seconds, that's the down portion or against gravity, the control against gravity. Three second lower, and then I'm gonna explode up. That's what X means. I'm not gonna pause at the bottom and I'm not gonna pause at the top. Those are zeros. X means explode. So I'm gonna explode up against gravity, okay? So seated shoulder, external rotation. Um, I'll kind of demo how I set up with that and how I position myself. Um, so you can be seated on the floor, or on a box, on a bench, whatever, just in the seated position. But first, a sip of coffee, which is still quite warm. I literally just got done working out 20 minutes ago. It was a doozy today. That was a good one, Corey and Brandon. Okay, I'm gonna take a five pound plate, usually for a particular isolation movement for this very light in weight. It could be all the way down to a soup can. Okay. This might be like the Jane Fonda position. I don't know. Or senior picture pose. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to come down uh, three seconds and then explode up. Demo from the back. Yeah. Okay. You can see me. Kind of watch my. 
my shoulder blades again. All right, so a nice little isolation of the rotator cuff musculature, because a lot of the rotator cuff musculature, um, if you ask Dr. Google this, I can post a picture, um, is on the back side of the shoulder blade, and it does a lot of that motion called external rotation, or if you were to pitch a baseball, external rotation, and that motion is external rotation. The follow through in baseball is internal rotation. So. Um, the rotator cuff musculature does mostly external rotation and it helps um, create stability into the shoulder joint. So this particular motion, very low grade, okay? I'm working on the eccentric control, which helps in stability and what I talked about before, kinesthetic awareness. Can Amy control her shoulder blade against her rib cage as she lowers against gravity? So when I'm in that position, I'm thinking of almost like showing my armpit as I'm rotating that uh, weight or very lightweight dumbbell suit can down. And as I come up, again, I'm going to try to rotate and kind of flare my wing a little bit. Um, so, you know, I could have manipulated that... Uh, that position uh, of a three zero x two, right? I can have a two second pause at the top. That's fine. Um, these tempos are just something that you can uh, strictly adhere to to help create consistency over time. Um, and usually, when you're isolating movements or little muscles, um, three seconds is a good sweet spot um, for either the eccentric or the concentric portion. Um, so, you know, sometimes my shoulders aren't up for that type of motion, so I might have to vouch for something else or even a um, push-up plank hold. Um, but uh, those two particular exercises were significantly instilled into my training, um, especially in the first 12 weeks. So uh, they were sprinkled throughout my training regimen uh, as I was prepping for Miami uh, a year, gosh, like a year and a half ago already. Oh my gosh. So um, Landmine is awesome. If you guys have any questions regarding Landmine use, setup, um, or even ideas, definitely drop me a comment or a DM. Um, definitely here to help. Um, so I, I think that's a nice little little uh, tidbit and um, something that can be sprinkled into someone's physical therapy and even training regimen. So if the, the shoulders or a little bit of the rotator cuff is irritated, especially when you get into that extension type motion, slow your roll. Stay off the barbell for a little bit. Stay off the pull-up bar for a little bit. And um, add, maybe sprinkle in some of these movements um, and as a disclaimer, if you're not my actual patient, um, these aren't going to be particularly for you. So I'm just commenting on things that I personally went through. So full disclosure there. Um, if you're in pain, go see your physical therapist. And um, if you're in need of a physical therapist and you're not in Charlotte, send me a DM. I kind of have some connections around the United States and world. So um, I can help you out there, but, uh, why, you know, I'm just trying to think from a, um, patient perspective, why would I perform it sitting down? Why would I perform a landmine sitting down? Um, I think kind of how I mentioned before is it's going to be a lot harder as if I was standing. And if you were to try this, when you, um, go into your next training session, perform a landmine press at each of those tempo movements, three down, one second pause, three up, um, and one second pause at the top, and then maybe get on both of your knees into tall kneeling is what we call that, 
um, same deal and then maybe on one knee and do that same tempo and then uh, sitting down on a box they progressively get harder as you get closer to the ground so why not pick a happy medium where you're halfway up the ground and you're halfway from standing so you know a 16 inch box is fine or something this is just a cooler that I'm using um, so yeah I think uh, if, if someone's getting a lot of end range pain slow your roll a little bit take that particular movement and just kind of put that if it's a toes to bar or something, or even baseball throwing, just take it out of the picture um, for uh, just a little while. Put it in your back pocket. Don't throw it completely in the closet and forget about it. But um, add in or sprinkle in some type of tempo movement um, that still loads those tendons uh, and muscles of the rotator cuff. So um, two of my favorite exercises that I began with in... Um, as I progressed over time with my training, I would add more and more load up to um, now, personally, I'm up to a 25 pound plate, um, which is on a, a 35 pound bar. And I also add another five pound plate. So 30 pounds with a 35 pound bar is pretty good, especially um, without shoulder pain. So you have to appreciate those small jumps and successes before moving on to the next level. Um, in particular, the external rotation um, exercise, um, fantastic exercise as well, just to kind of give the rotator cuff a little bit more isolation love. So um, try those, try those out. Um, see if they, they may help uh, with your particular situation, but if you're in the South Charlotte area, definitely hit Fortress Physical Therapy up. If you need any help or guidance, um, I can send you in the right direction. Um, but for the most part, I'll be drinking my coffee. Um, I'm going to try to do these coffee talks uh, as consistent as I can. I'm not 100% sure about next week. However, um, yeah, if you guys have any comments or questions, definitely... Uh, drop it below into the comment section. Uh, this will be up, um, uploaded to the Instagram TV as well as the YouTube channel. So everything that I do is gonna be transferred over to YouTube. YouTube is awesome, I love it. So know that you're still gonna get some content and some education on your belt. Uh, additionally, if you want me to demonstrate a particular exercise, I can go through that and explain my thought process behind that particular exercise. Um, exercise is great. I think exercise and manual therapy combined is golden. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate for manual physical therapy, but you have to back it up, right? Because our nervous system is constantly receiving input. So we have to be able to, again, change the foundation. Not fix it, we have to change it. So you gotta be able to put in the work. Um, so, um, I think that's it. I'll probably be signing off. If anybody has any questions, again, contact me. I'll upload my contact information again into the storyline, and I'll upload this video to YouTube, and I will check in with you guys perhaps next week. So, be on the lookout. I'll kind of explain my progression um, and uh, see what my training next week. I will be on my last week of aerobic bodybuilder next week and um, it's, it's been a great program uh, and every Saturday uh, I do a CrossFit Pine Bowls uh, workout and today, today was great. It was all shoulders and I felt pretty strong. So um, yeah, I'll kind of just talk about my journey and go from there. So FPT Coffee Talk, don't forget to drop in what type of coffee you're drinking today. Um, you know, it's usually blonde and, and, and medium roast mixed on Saturdays for me because I'm at my master's, uh, my athlete's house. So, um, yeah, uh, I will talk to you guys later and thanks for dropping in and, uh, I appreciate everything. And if you have any questions for sure, just, uh, send me a DM. Have a great Saturday.